This is WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a weekly video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing all the biggest information and network security stories each week. I'm Corey Nockreiner, CISSP, Director of Security Strategy at WatchGuard, and your host. Let's jump right in with the week starting February 27th. The biggest story this week was the RSA Security Conference, which I just returned from late last night. This is one of the largest security conferences in the world where the whole industry comes together to talk about security. So a lot of this show will be dedicated to uh, sharing some of the themes of this conference. Strangely enough, many of the themes of this conference uh, reflect some of the uh, predictions I made for security both this year and last year. So the big themes were one mobile, including one of my predictions from this year talking about bring your own device. Everyone is worried about a new generation of users that are bringing their own devices to work and how to secure that workforce. In fact, one of the keynote presentations, uh, the president of Symantec talked about what he called digital natives, which are uh, people that were born in the 1990s that don't remember a time before the internet, versus digital images immigrants, which are people that were born earlier than that and had to learn how to use the internet as it came available. And they found that digital natives are the ones that are using Bring Your Own Device quite a bit, and they actually work very efficiently with it, so it's up to security companies like us to help secure these type of devices. Another big theme was probably visibility. Again, one of the predictions I didn't make last year was that it was the year of breaches. I did include that prediction for this year, by the way. And people are realizing that even if you have strong security, you can have breaches in your network, maybe through backdoors or users that do things they're not supposed to. So we need better visibility tools to tell us when we've been breached so that we can quickly recover. We have some sort of disaster recovery plan to bring our businesses back online. And visibility tools can help find those breaches in our network. A few other themes included, of course, the cloud, which I talk about in my predictions this year. Many, many businesses are leveraging cloud services, which is, again, usually Web 2.0 and virtualization services that they leverage from some sort of external partner over the network. So everyone's talking about private clouds, public clouds, hybrid clouds, and how to protect them. And of course, WatchGuard is releasing XTMV and XCSV, which are virtual versions of our product, which will help with this type of situation. Another theme was the, the increasing theft of intellectual property. A number of organizations are saying different uh, nation states are starting to use cyber terrorism to steal each other's intellectual property. So it's very important that you have strong data leakage prevention, like what we offer in our XCS appliance to make sure your intellectual property doesn't leak to the wrong hands. In fact, the head of the FBI even mentioned that he believes that cyber threats will soon outpace normal terrorism. So that's just a few of the themes we saw at RSA. I'd be sure to follow security media and maybe the WatchGuard Security Center because a lot of RSA-related stories will probably trickle out over the next few weeks or days. So we skipped the anonymous-related news last week, but this week the story is too big to ignore. Early this week, Anonymous, in partnership with WikiLeaks, finally released a, the email archive from their Stratfor breach. This was a breach they did about a month ago. Uh, it's an intelligence agency in the U.S. that works often with our government. So they stole all of Stratfor's email a while ago. This week they released it all, so now the media has their hands on it. There's a lot of sensitive data there, and you can imagine Stratfor's pretty upset about this. Now, in some turnaround news, another story this week was the Interpol was able to capture 25 suspected anonymous members. These were members from Chile and Argentina and some of the, the Southern American states. Uh, so the Interpol has been able to catch some of those anonymous suspect, suspected members. Uh, however, right after that capture, anonymous did a DDoS attack to take down the Interpol site. Moving on to other breaches, a couple stories came out this week talking about NASA, our U.S. space agency's lack security. Uh, one of the stories was talking about how a stolen laptop contained the command and control algorithms for the International Space Station. This laptop was stolen, and whoever has it in their hands can potentially send commands to the space station. On top of that, we also found 
that NASA believes uh, a year ago or so, Chinese-based attackers were able to infiltrate and gain access to their jet propulsion laboratory and be able to control that as well. So this is just more proof that even large organizations aren't implementing all the security controls that they have available to them, which is one of the reasons we highly recommend our XTM or multi-purpose security appliances to make sure you have the defense and depth you need to protect against many different breaches. So let's finish off this week's video with the release of a neat new security tool, or more specifically, a new feature in a security tool that was already available to you. Uh, the EFF, or Electronic Frontier Foundation, makes a tool called HTTPS Anywhere. It's a browser plugin that works with Firefox and more recently Chrome, and it forces when you go to websites that have a SSL or a more secure option, it forces those websites to use the most secure option available. Over the past few weeks, we've been talking about this SSL weak key problem, this weakness that some mathematicians and researchers have found. And this problem only affected appliances uh, like VPN appliances, routers, and maybe some firewalls. Well, HTTPS Anywhere folks, they've added a little tool that will detect whether or not what you're connecting to suffers from the weak key problem. So if you're worried about any of your devices, I recommend you grab HTTPS Anywhere. Do know this new feature is only available in their Firefox version of their plugin. They just made their Chrome version available as beta, but this particular feature doesn't exist yet. So if you're interested, go grab that neat tool. So that's it for this week's WatchGuard Security Week in Review. As usual, if you like more regular updates, be sure to follow me on Twitter, at SecAdept. You can also follow our WatchGuard Security Center blog. And as usual, here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.